Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Malika Modak, and I'm a PhD student in biomedical engineering. Today, I would like to share with you the exciting concept of nanoparticles and how they are powerful tools for targeted drug delivery. I want to start by thinking about cancer like a weed in a garden. In this garden, the majority of the flowers are normal, healthy cells. And when cancer develops, it's like a weed among these flowers. Current conventional anti-cancer treatments, like chemotherapy, are like a weed spray for the entire lawn. Yes, they can impact and kill the cancer cells, but they also affect the healthy cells. This is, what, this is what accounts for the awful side effects faced by cancer patients, such as nausea, hair loss, and even loss of fertility. Therefore, we need better ways to target these anti-cancer treatments directly to the cancer cells while sparing the normal healthy cells. My research is focused at solving this problem through the use of nanoparticles, which are powerful, promising tools to achieve this and achieve targeted drug delivery. So to start, what are nanoparticles? As the name suggests, they are tiny, tiny particles that have one aspect of their size that is between 1 and 1,000 nanometers, which makes them over 1,000 times smaller than any of the cells in the human body. And even though they're tiny, they can have a huge impact. And the two things I want to share with you today about nanoparticles is that they can improve the delivery of therapeutic cargo because they are so versatile and tunable. So how can nanoparticles improve drug delivery? First, they can allow for the stable loading and encapsulation of therapeutic cargo or anti-cancer drugs. This allows the drugs to be protected from harmful environments in the body, such as the acidic GI tract. They can, this can also allow for delivery of drugs that might not otherwise be soluble in the blood, kind of like how oil and water don't mix. And so by loading them into nanoparticles, we can actually allow them to be delivered into the body. Next, nanoparticles can also enhance the transport of these drugs directly to the target site. So this maximizes how much of a drug is getting to the disease site while minimizing how much of that drug is just excreted through the body as waste through the kidneys. And it's the careful design and engineering of nanoparticles that allows us to achieve this. And so this brings me to my second point. Nanoparticles are extremely versatile and tunable. There are four aspects of a nanoparticle that we can change, and how we change these influences where they go in the body and what cells they're more likely to be targeted to. So starting with the surface of a nanoparticle. We can modify a nanoparticle surface to direct it to specific cell types. So for example, say we want to deliver a nanoparticle to a specific tumor cell, and we know that this tumor cell has a specific marker on its surface. We can design our nanoparticles to have a complementary receptor or marker on their surface, which can let them find and bind to the target cell, kind of like two puzzle pieces coming together. We can also control the size of nanoparticles. This is important because it's known that depending on the size of a particle, it is more likely to be targeted to certain cell types over others. And we can use this property to our advantage when thinking about designing particles for drug delivery. Similarly, the shape of a nanoparticle also influences what organs in the body it is more likely to be targeted to. And finally, the composition or what material a particle is made out of can also be tuned. And as you can imagine, there are many groups around the world investigating many different materials to make nanoparticles. And so now I'd like to focus on the material that my lab uses to make particles, which is shown here. It's called polyethylene glycol polypropylene sulfide, or PEG PPS for short. This material is a dye block polymer, which simply means it's a polymer with two parts, the PEG and the PPS. And we can control the lengths of these two parts to create a specific PEG to PPS ratio of this material. And depending on this ratio, this material can form into these four distinct nanoparticle shapes. And as we know, depending on the shape and size of nanoparticles, we can use them to target different cell types. And we're using this property to investigate how can we use these different particles to target different disease states and cell populations. So how do we exactly take this material and form it into nanoparticles? We do so using this device shown here, called a CIJ mixer. This device has two inlets into which we load our nanoparticle components. So we load our PEG PPS material, as well as any therapeutic cargo or drugs that we want to load inside. We also include water. 
and when we inject these components through the mixer using syringes, they rapidly mix within the mixer in this tiny confined space, and the polymer wraps around itself, encapsulating the therapeutic cargo or drugs in the process. And what we get out of the end are our stably formed nanoparticles with drugs loaded inside. So using this process, we can make these four different nanoparticles and investigate them for specific drug delivery applications. So what does this process look like overall? Once we've made our nanoparticles, we have to verify have we made the correct particle that we wanted to. And we do this using specific imaging methods. So at the top right is an image of one of my actual nanoparticles that I've made in the lab. After verifying this, we then move on to testing them in cells and then small animal models, where we look at things like can they deliver the drug and what biologic effect does this have? And this is all aimed at answering the question, can we use these nanoparticles to deliver specific drugs to address a specific disease? And so to conclude, I want to reiterate how powerful nanoparticles can be for achieving targeted drug delivery, and that they can improve the delivery of therapeutic cargo because they are so versatile and tunable. To learn more about how we can use nanoparticles, specifically with PEG-PPS, to address not just cancer, but diseases like heart disease and diabetes, you can visit our lab website at scott-group.northwestern.edu. And thank you for listening.